In this video, we're going to be primarily focusing on some Photoshop tips that will enable you to do things with your collages um, that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do with auto collage. So the first thing we're going to talk about is understanding the auto select option here in Photoshop. If you notice over here in my layers palette, image box 12 is the currently selected image opening. And if I go to my move tool here in Photoshop and choose this auto select option, any layer that I click on, for example, if I were to click on the top left image opening here, notice automatically in the layers palette it jumps to that layer. So that's what auto select layer does. So anytime I want to interact with one of the layers within my layout, I just click on the appropriate box and it will automatically jump to that layer. So the first thing we want to talk about is working with guidelines. And in this first example, we're going to take one image opening and we're going to make it bigger. And so to keep with the spacing that we already have in our collage, we're going to click on an image opening. And then just to show you how we could do it with auto collage, we'll come into auto collage and we'll open up our guideline tool. And one of the options uh, in auto collage is this right border. Right at the top we have all these great guideline tools and one of them is right border. And so when I choose process, you can see what happens. We get a guideline right at the right border of the image opening that we happen to have selected. So then I'm going to delete this image opening entirely. And then with this image opening here on the left, if I use my free transform, which is Control T on a PC or Command T on a Mac, I could then snap right to that guideline. And I know everything would line up perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out my guidelines. So that's the first example. Now another thing that we might typically want to do is we might want to take an image opening and cut it up into pieces. And so for example on this image opening here on the bottom, and I get this question a lot because they like the layout but they want to, but they need a couple more image openings or whatever the case might be and they want to split this layout, this image opening, and we're going to actually split it into four equal size image openings. So you see here I'm on image box 12 and the first thing we need to do is I'll pull over some guidelines. So I'm going to click on this image opening right above it and then rather than use the guideline tools uh, which I certainly could do um, in auto collage, I'm just going to use Photoshop's uh, guideline tools. So I have my rulers visible, that would be control R if they're not visible, command R on a Mac, or you could go up to the view menu here and choose rulers that way as well. But with my rulers visible, I selected a, a, an image layer here. I could just drag the guideline from my ruler and you can see it won't snap to any of these other layers that I have selected. It will only snap to the layer that's currently selected. It'll snap to the dead center. It'll also snap to the left and right edges. Boom. So I'm going to click on this image opening directly to the right of that drag over a guideline and snap it right to the left edge. Then I'm going to click on this image opening and pull one down vertically and then click on this image opening and pull one down vertically. Cause see, so now you see what we've done. We've cr actually created four equal sized image openings. So now I can grab my selection tool and actually let's click on image box, this image box, so this be image box 12 and then I can grab my rectangular selection tool and I can just make a selection and if you look very closely, I'm on the image part. Now watch this gray box right here. As soon as I hit my delete key, notice what happens. We get this little vertical line that actually split this right in two. And then I'm going to click over on my layer mask and I'm going to hit delete. Now watch this white box. As soon as I hit delete, notice what happens. You can see it just very, very carefully I, I've actually made a selection and it actually added to uh, this image opening. There's actually a little tip if I hold down my alt key or option key on a Mac and click on a layer mask we can actually see the layer mask itself and so actually what we want to do is we want to make sure that our background color is black and when I hit delete then it will actually take away a piece of that layer mask. And then I could be on my layer mask right here and I can just go ahead and go horizontally and hit delete. Now I want you to understand this concept. 
because it's it is an important concept to understand. If I hide my guidelines here, if you look at this layer mask, you see four equal parts. Now, if you look here at the layer preview, notice that these there's two vertical gray boxes that appear. But when I click on my layer icon, notice what happens. Notice that if I turn off my layer mask, watch what happens. Watch these four boxes right here. And there's a little Photoshop tip. Hold my shift key and click. Notice how those horizontal lines appear and disappear. And that's because in this case, there's no layer mask being applied. In this case, there is. So what the layer content is, for all intents and purposes, is really irrelevant. Because it's what the layer mask is telling Photoshop to show. And the layer mask, where the black areas of the layer mask is telling Photoshop, don't show that little bit right there in the horizontal. Now, let me show you one concept before we go much farther. But before I do that, I'm going to duplicate this layer. Just a real quick Control J or Command J on a Mac. And I'm going to turn that duplicate off. And back down here in Image Box 12, I'm actually just going to come in here and grab a photo. And I'm going to use Auto Collage to insert the photo. And what's going to happen here is this photo is going to be inserted across all four image openings. And you can see that there. And in certain circumstances, that may be a real appealing effect to be able to do that. And of course, it might look better if we turn off our effects, like so. Now, the other thing I want to talk about that we could do as well, and don't be afraid to experiment, is we can use that same basic concept, and we could apply a single image across multiple image openings. So I'm just going to select several layers. You can see all the layers that I have selected. See all those layers? And I'm just going to right click and choose uh, merge layers that will merge all those layers. And then when I select an image this time, watch what's going to happen here. I'm going to use auto collage again to insert my image. That image is going to cascade across all of those image openings. Now in this particular instance it may not look the greatest or it might actually look really cool. It just kind of depends on the image. But you can see how very easily uh, you can create something that's really uh, kind of interesting. So don't be afraid to experiment uh, with, with that concept. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete that image opening and let's go back up to our duplicate. So again, really our exercise here is to take one large image opening and split it uh, into four individual smaller ones. Now we've seen how we can cut away from the layer mask. We can cut part of that layer mask away. Now, I'm going to focus solely on my layer mask at this point. I, and all I did was hold down my Alt key and clicked on the layer mask icon or hold down the Option key and click. But I need to duplicate this layer three more times. Okay. And once I've done that, then uh, this topmost layer, again, I'm going to Alt-click on it. So I look at just the black and white representation. I'm going to grab my uh, Marquee Selection Tool and delete three of the boxes. So I just make a selection, hit my Delete key. Make another selection, hit the Delete key. And I'm going to move on to the next box. And then this time, I'm going to delete these three. And I'm going to hover over my selection, fine tune my selection with my arrow keys, and hit delete. Click on the next one. And so we have the top two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, let's see here, we need to delete these two. So we'll delete that one, and we'll delete that one. And then for our last layer, we're going to delete the top two. I'm going to hold down my shift key just to be sneaky and add to the current selection and go like that. OK, so now I'm going to go back to my layers here. I'm going to just turn all these back on, which they all are. And as I turn each one off, watch these little boxes. So if I click on the top one, that one, then that one, then that one, 
than that one. And that all had to do with just adjusting this layer mask and deleting the appropriate layers that we didn't need. Okay, so we've seen how we can take one image opening and make it bigger. We've seen how we can take a big image opening and split it into multiple counterparts. We've seen how we can insert one images across multiple image openings. And let's talk about one more concept, and that is layer alignment. So essentially, we have two square boxes. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a portrait image into one box, a landscape image into the other box to illustrate a point to you. So let's go ahead and do a portrait image in the first box. So we'll get that done. Okay, so there's our portrait image. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. Notice that this image extends well beyond the top. And in fact, I'm going to actually ex exaggerate this. Maybe I'll do it to the... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and ex exaggerate this a little bit. See how far these transformation handles are outside the image opening? And then over here, I'm going to insert a landscape image opening. A landscape image. Let's go here and choose the insert photo option and notice now that these transformation handles do not extend as far outside the image opening as the ones did over here so let's talk about layer alignment if for example I were to select this first image and I wanted to snap a guideline right to the edge of what I see as the image opening I would pull a guideline down and you'll notice that it does not snap at all it will actually if I move it uh, just right it would actually you could feel it right there it snaps boom and it's snapping to the top of the layer content and how do I know that? Watch what happens. If I control or command click on my layer over here in my layers palette, right here on the layer thumbnail, the layer preview, if I can control click here on a PC or command click on a Mac, that will select the layer contents. And notice where that guideline is. Dead smack on to the layer content. You say, well, what, what point are we trying to make here? Well, let me show you. If I were to select these two boxes, we know that if we hover one box over the other, we know that they're, they're roughly the same size, right? So in theory, if I were to select both of these boxes and I said Photoshop, align to top edges, that's what this little icon does right here, align to top, align to vertical centers, align to bottom. But if I choose the align top edges, guess what? These two boxes are definitely not aligned to the top edge. And the reason for that is because the layer content of the box on the right is right there. That's where that image extends beyond the image opening. And then for this layer, the layer content is right there. That's why these boxes don't align, because Photoshop is thinking that we want to align based on the content of the layer. And of course, that's not what we want. So what do we do in a situation where we have our images in these boxes and we do want to align to the image box itself? Well, we could just you know, eyeball it, get it close, and we could zoom in real, real tight, and we could use our arrow keys and get that one just about on the image opening line and then use our arrow keys and move this one down pixel by pixel by pixel by pixel uh, to say yep that looks good that's that's aligned right there and we could do that okay but that's not the most elegant way to do it so instead what we would do to do it the quote unquote correct way is understand some of the options we have so first of all let's adjust this image here um, to fit in the image opening so we're going to choose this adjust image placement tool here in auto collage and let's adjust the image so it's really how we would want it and then what we're doing once we have our image in place I'm gonna come over here to my layers palette and right click on the layer mask icon itself and choose apply layer mask and do the same thing with this one right click apply layer mask now if you'll notice what happens here if you see here in my preview if I control click on this layer now 
notice that the content that extended beyond the image opening has now been clipped away. And that's what essentially that apply layer mask does. It clips away any excess content. So when I select these two image layers now and choose the alignment tools, guess what? They align straight up. Same is true if I were to pull over a guideline. Boom, it'll snap right to the box that I have selected. In this case, I don't have any box selected. So let me select one. And as I pull down my guide, boom, it snaps. Boom, it snaps. So it will snap right to the edge. So if I want to align this one directly below, I can pick it up and just boom, it'll snap right into place. And the reason it's snapping into place, you can feel it just snaps right to that guideline, is because there's no other content outside. In fact, there's no layer mask at all because we applied the layer mask. So the content that we're seeing uh, is just the square. And that's why it aligned just just real easy you can line everything the way you want to so that should get you going that should give you a good understanding of some additional tips to further modify your collages and understand alignment a little bit more uh, and so forth uh, so I hope you enjoyed some of these tips and thanks for watching